Okay, so to load in the shape files, we're going to go to the top left button here, click um, Add Vector Layer, and then you're going to browse to the folder where you save all the uh, files that I sent you. And the first thing that should come up is this African continent count, whatever. But you can see there's several different types of files. I'm not really sure what all the different types are. Um, so click on the SHP extension. That is the shapefile extension. So click on it and then click open. And you can see it loads the whole African continent. So it's the African continent.shp. Every time we load a vector layer, we just load the .shp. And so this is just in case, I know some people aren't always working in South Africa. So you've got this African continent. Now let's just go and add all the other layers that I gave you, just so you can see what we've got. So keep going there, go browse. And the next one here you can see is BVC, and that's actually the Bushfelt Complex outline. And all of these outlines are from Sue, so Sue digitized them. So you can add bvc.shp, uh, click open, and you can see mine's added it as a light gray layer. But you can see in the north here there's a bushfelt complex loaded. Keep going, next one down. Okay, Cape Fold Belt. Um, I know not many of you are working in the south, but Janice, you might need it with, if you well, can, probably with some of your borehole data maybe. And you'll see it added a layer, a line, sorry, along the Cape in the south. That's also important if you're showing the tectonic provinces of South Africa. It's, you can show the Cape Fold Belt. Keep going, the next one down. Colesburg, it's the lineament that divides the craton. So if you're working on craton, it's a good thing to put on your map. So it's this north-south line. Keep going. Um, leave out gravity, we'll come back. Karoo is just an outline of the Karoo, so it covers the whole of South Africa, well, a large part of South Africa. Janice, you, you can use that for your maps. Keep going. KVC is the carpal craton, so anyone working on craton is a nice thing to include. You can see the outline here. Something to keep in mind is that, like I said, all of this is from Sue. And different people have slightly different outlines. So don't get frustrated if you look at different papers um, and you get different results. Okay, the next one down is Paul Beaufort, leave that, we'll come back to it. And Maltino, leave it. Essay outline, you can add that, the shape file, just because I want to show you the problem with it. At the moment, this is the only outline of South Africa that I've got, but it's got the other provinces. So we just, I'm sure somebody's got a shape file that's just the outline of South Africa. And scroll down some more. Is it Adam? TMI, ignore that, that's a magnetics, we'll add it now. This TVL, I just wanted to show it to you. It says Tinker. And so that's actually not from Sue. It's from the paper by Justine Tinker. And she looked at a bunch of deep seismic data and used that to map extensions for the Transvaal and extensions for the Fentersdorp. So if you are looking at the WITS data, it might be worth looking at some of her work as well. But anyway, let's add it. You can see that's her version of the Transvaal. I think we're almost finished. There's just the Fentersdorp. Oh, no, there's WITS as well. So this is Sue's WITS. I think Justine also had her own outline. As Matt pointed out on Monday, most of this doesn't outcrop, so it's all from boreholes and um, seismics, and that's, I think, why it's slightly different, everyone's versions. And then the last one, did I miss out the Fentersdorp? Sorry. Then add Fentersdorp. Okay. So we've added all these shape files. Oh, sorry, I'm just going to close that. And you can see that they're all in this bottom left, and you can click them on, click them off. And um, I'm going to go to the Zoom button up top here, Zoom in the plus, and I'm going to zoom into South Africa. You're just going to draw a box, and it zooms you in here. Um, something to keep in mind is that I cannot see the Carpval outline, the Karoo outline, the Colesburg outline, all because they're below the South African shape file, and the South African shape file is coming in. So you can click on this here and drag it down, and suddenly you're seeing all of these other shape files. You can change the colors quite easily. You just double 
Okay, double click. And then here you would kind of change the colors. Um, okay, but we're just keeping it quick today. So let's add in the, the magnetic and the gravity data. Now I'm going to add it in. I'm not sure if I do it correctly. So if anybody else figures out a better way to do it, please let us know. So I think now you have to go to the second one down that says add raster layer. What is a raster layer? Right? Is that all? Oh. Okay. So that's why we're now going to raster instead of vector because we've got a grid of data. So now scroll down to gravity. And these files here I've got are .ers, which are actually ARC files. And I can't figure out how to take a Geosoft grid file and get it into here. So I take it from Geosoft, I export it as an ERS file, and then I import it into here. So I click on just the ERS one. I think all the other ones just have supporting information that you need along with this ERS file. And you can see it's loaded in this gravity that looks very cloud-like. You then go here to the gravity in this left-hand column, double-click on it, and it's, now it's rendered, so it's displayed as a single-band gray. Try single-band pseudocolor, let's try something else. Let's load in the magnetics. Let's just go again, add raster, scroll down, and add in this TMI. So it's Total Magnetic Intensity Data and ERS. Again, ERS file, and click open. What's so this is the magnetics. I can tell you that a lot of the old school geologists like this grayscale magnetics. Okay, so for now, I've just shown you how to load stuff into here. Let's quickly look how to create a map. So what you do, let's zoom into an area. So I'm going to again go to that little plus sign, and I'm going to zoom into is that little circle there? It doesn't matter if you don't zoom into the exact right one. It's on the edge of the craton. So let's zoom in. So you can see here, this is the Colesburg lineament, and here's the edge of the craton coming up, and here's Tromsberg. And now what you would do is you go Project, and you go New Print Composer. And you click on that, and you can give it a name. So let's call it Tromsberg. Okay. And it opens this whole new window. And now what you've got to then do is go layout, add map. And now you click and drag to where you want to put the map, and it's created a map for you. And it literally takes whatever you had in the previous view and puts it here. And now is when you can go to this item properties, click on it, and scroll down. And this is where you can go here to grid, and you click on this plus button, add a new grid, and then you scroll down a little bit more, and these are the intervals you want to put on the outside of your grid. So I'm going to change them to five, because I want to do it every five degrees. Or not, okay, sorry, let's make it every one. And so these are the grid lines you can see. It's putting in grid lines every one degree. And if you carry on scrolling down, you can change the grid frame. So play around with it. I'm going to use a zebra one. So it gives a nice frame that's black and white. And you can choose frame size. And then next one down says draw coordinates. And you click on it. It gives you your coordinates. You can choose if you want a decimal or decimal minutes sec I mean degrees minutes seconds. You can change the font. I'm just going to make it a bit bigger here. Let's keep scrolling down. Okay. And I'm going to change my decimal degrees to zero. Unfortunately, it doesn't put east and south. The only way I could figure it out to get it to do that was if I put degrees minutes seconds. Oh, even then. I don't know. You'll have to play around with how to get it to do south, to display south and east. So this is how to do a quick map. One other cool thing, but I haven't quite perfected it, but I wanted to show it to you, is how to do an index map or an inset. So how to give a zoom out of where this area is. So I'm going to go back to my original window, 
and I'm going to zoom to the extent of my bird. Oh, there we are. So I just push this one, all the arrows pointing outwards. And now I want to display, um, I want to display this whole thing as my index map. So I'm going to now go back to the, the fancy map we've created. I'm going to go layout, add map, and let me put it in the top left here. And I let go. And you can see, you could then have an arrow pointing to where it is. So it gives people an idea of the context of where in South Africa it is. To get it to be displayed more, and I you actually have to play around. There must be an easier way to do it, but you have to play around with these ex um, extents. The north, that would probably be, let's do 20 and see how it changes. Yeah, so you could just play around with it. Okay, everybody, last thing, click for me on plugins. So plugins is quite a big thing on QGIS. It's like modules that have been developed. Click on manage and install plugins. You obviously have to be connected to the internet. It's busy loading the repository of plugins. This is the one we're looking for, open layers plugin. So you would click on it, and uh, here, I've already installed it, it would say install. And so what you do then is you click close and it loads it under the web menu and open layers plugin. And so what I can literally do is I can click on Google Maps, I can choose any of these Google Maps, let's just choose physical. And it worked earlier. It loads the Google Map onto here. So that's also quite nice with some with maps if you want to do a location map or even if you're doing field work. You can try and load all of your maps on top of each other. Um, especially nice Google Maps satellite. One other plugin that they have, um, I've loaded it already. Oh, it's this G Earth View up top here. And when you do that, it sorry, loads a separate one here that you can see is Google Earth. And it, I think, actually opens Google Earth. I think it works at home, and then loads your shape files onto Google Earth, so it works the other way around. So just very useful um, things that people have been working on, and this is all free. I mean, people. Okay, so you can see it's loaded my map into Google Earth with the shape files as well.